Tonight, Victorians warn they face tougher restrictions as the state records hundreds of new cases. A COVID death in New South Wales as Queenslanders rush home across the border. A crash plane and $80 million worth of cocaine seized as police bust a major drug smuggling ring. And a special honour for our diggers to mark the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. This is 7 News with Angela Cox. Good evening. Melbourne residents have been warned they face a tougher and longer lockdown. Three more people have died and there are 397 new infections. But remarkably, there are still people flouting the restrictions. Blake Johnson has more. Case numbers have dropped for the second day in a row here, but not by enough, warns the Victorian Premier. To keep further restrictions at bay, he has hinted we could be in line for a tighter lockdown if numbers don't improve further this weekend. Three more deaths and 397 cases were recorded in Victoria overnight. Worryingly, there are 49 new cases where the source of the infection is a mystery. That is a real concern and that's what's driving some of the work that's being done. Uh, it was being done last night and today. Uh, our public health officials engaging with their, some of their interstate colleagues, their national colleagues. Uh, it's, a, it, it's a very uh, significant group of experts that are working through those particular community transmission numbers. Again, police here are reporting bizarre excuses for people trying to avoid lockdown. You know, we had someone go from, from Bentley uh, up to Sunbury to get some takeaway. Now, why? There's absolutely no need, and, and it's because they're selfish. And they're, they're just carrying on, as I said, carrying on with their lives as though this pandemic doesn't exist. Almost 3,500 cases have been recorded in Victoria this week, and we are yet to see the effect compulsory masks have had on case numbers. That data should be through this week. New South Wales has recorded its first death from coronavirus in more than a month. The man in his 80s became infected from the Crossroads Hotel cluster. Brian Seymour has more. Good afternoon. We're at the Harris Farm supermarket in Leichhardt, the latest to undergo intensive cleaning. As New South Wales Health has confirmed overnight, there were another 17 cases in the state and the death of an 83-year-old man. Now here is what not to do. Stunning pictures of train passengers at Central and Town Hall today packing in closely, very few masks being worn, a real recipe for infection. The advice clearly not being followed here. At the hotspots we visited today, we are seeing more masks being worn. People generally aware and taking precautions. It's all over Sydney at the moment. What can you do? you just got to be careful. I'm trying to keep my distance and keep washing my hands and stuff, but that's OK. I have to keep going. From today, gyms are required to roll out COVID marshals to ensure people register their details when they enter and practice hygiene and social distancing during their workout. The opposition leader wants the community to do more. People have to be aware that everywhere they go, uh, there could be someone who has COVID-19. Health authorities are asking anyone who was at the Mounties Club in Mount Pritchard on July 20 to 22 to immediately isolate and get tested. There were another 23,500 tests done overnight. Currently there are 3,567 cases of COVID-19 in New South Wales and there are 11 hotspots. New South Wales Health desperately hoping the number of new cases does not rise. An aged care worker in Brisbane has tested positive to coronavirus. She's the wife of a man infected by two women who lied about their trip to Melbourne. It comes as the Queensland border slams shut on people living in Sydney. Crystal Etherington has more from Coolangatta. Police here on the Queensland-New South Wales border have ramped up patrols to stop all Sydney residents from crossing into Queensland. At one o'clock this morning, the state's border was closed to Greater Sydney. Cars queued for kilometres to make the last-minute dash through yesterday evening. Today, there were still long delays at the crossings as police ramped up checks on cars and searched buses. Like 10 minutes more, maybe. Yeah, 20. Ridiculous, isn't it? At Brisbane Airport last night, there was also a rush to get in before the deadline. I had to come home very quickly, pay an 
a ridiculous amount of money to fly with Qantas. Today, flights from Sydney still landed. Queensland passengers escorted by the army onto buses and taken into hotel quarantine for 14 days. I'm here to see my new green child and help my daughter. Travellers must download a new border pass each week and declare it if they've been to a COVID-19 hotspot. Anyone caught lying on their border declaration pass will be hit with a $4,000 fine. Our cameras have captured the moment a man was arrested for murder over a fatal house fire on the New South Wales south coast. A 49-year-old man died in the blaze in Nowra this afternoon. A man on the same street was arrested and charged. Laura Banks has more. Good afternoon. Well, there were dramatic scenes here in Bomaderry. 14 hours after the burnt body of Cameron Johnson was found inside his home, police had one of his neighbours in custody. They came armed with a search warrant, bagging a fuel can and golf club before the 26-year-old appeared in the backyard. Harley Thompson was promptly cuffed and taken into police custody. 49-year-old Cameron Johnson's body was found inside his Bomaderry home about 10.40 last night, dragged to the front yard, unable to be revived. Uh, just obscenities and uh, uh, somebody was trying to get into somebody else's house. There was a lot of banging, followed by a couple of visits from the police and then the, um, then the fire started. It was this arguing that drew neighbour attention. Police twice called before the fire was lit. I don't believe that there's were any fear of any any sort of um, arsonists running running the community. It's an ever changing beast. It can change, you know, by the by the hour. Both the victim and man in custody are known to police. Detectives now trying to piece together a motive: a grieving family in a confused neighbourhood this afternoon trying to come to terms with a senseless death. In breaking news, a man has been arrested over the Eastern Freeway crash that claimed the lives of four police officers in Melbourne. Leading Senior Constable Lynette Haler, Senior Constable Kevin King, Constable Glenn Humphreys and Constable Joshua Presney were killed while they intercepted a Porsche on the freeway in April. A 49-year-old from Frankston was arrested this morning and is assisting police. For Melbourne viewers, there will be more details at 6. Police have identified human remains found in bushland at Byron Bay last month. 42-year-old Thea Little was last seen in the Moobol area in northern New South Wales last October. Her family reported her missing in January. Her remains were found at a makeshift camp in the bush near the Tallow Beach Road after a search in July. Police are still trying to work out how she died. $80 million worth of cocaine destined for Australia has been seized in Papua New Guinea. It follows the mysterious crash of a light plane on a bush airstrip near Port Moresby. It's one of the biggest drug busts ever made by the AFP, which has been tracking the crime syndicate for two years. Brittany Lane has more. Well, five men allegedly members of a Melbourne-based criminal syndicate with links to an Italian crime gang have been busted attempting to import 500 kilograms of cocaine estimated at $80 million. The drug bust came after a small plane loaded with cocaine crashed while attempting to take off in Papua New Guinea. Authorities were watching the men as part of a two-year investigation. What the men did not know, however, is that the Queensland Joint Organised Crime Task Force, working with Victoria Police and the ACIC, was aware of their plan. The plane had taken off from Mariba in North Queensland on Sunday, flying low to avoid detection before landing in Papua New Guinea. And this audacious attempt shows the great lengths that syndicates will go to bring these substances into Australia by subverting our border controls. The plane was found empty and police believe several locals were involved in removing the drugs before the wreckage was discovered. The cocaine never made its way to the Australian shores, which we would uh, allege is prevented significant harm. The AFP believe the weight of the cocaine significantly impacted the plane's ability to take off, saying greed was a major factor in the syndicate's activities. 
A 28-year-old surfer is recovering in hospital after being attacked by a shark off Western Australia's southwest coast. Phil Mummett suffered serious leg injuries when the shark attacked yesterday afternoon at the farm surfing spot near Bunker Bay in Bustleton. He managed to fight off the white pointer by jamming his board into its mouth. This month marks the 75th anniversary of the Japanese surrender that ended World War II. But coronavirus restrictions have forced the government to find new ways to pay tribute to the diggers who saved our country. Nick McCallum explains. With all events marking the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II cancelled because of COVID, the federal government has embarked on a unique mission to honour our veterans. 75 years on, Australia says thanks to 97-year-old Reg Selwyn. And the message on is pretty simple, thank you for your service. A special commemorative medal and certificate for this New Guinea veteran marking the 75th anniversary of the end of World War II. And I'm proud of my service. All surviving veterans are to receive the medals and certificates. This is the least we can do for this extraordinary generation of Australians who fought so hard and sacrificed so much. 94-year-old George Raphael was meant to be a guest of honour for anniversary commemorations. Something that, you know, at my stage of life would have been very nice to be able to sit back and appreciate. A 19-year-old sailor, he was ashore at a naval base when the Japanese surrendered. But the bar was open and that was it. It was a write-off day. Deserve forgotten, people let themselves go in an unparalleled wave of carnival gaiety. Oh, joy, exultation, relief. For him, the medal and certificate will be a great honour. I think I see a smile on my face and I think about it. It means that much to you? Yes. The government hopes the medals and certificates will reach the 12,000 surviving Australian World War II veterans by the time of the anniversary, August the 15th. Still to come in 7 News, why Boris Johnson has put the brakes on easing COVID restrictions in England and the brazen jailbreak that's straight out of the criminal textbook. That's next. Can't wait for the next episode of Between Two Worlds? Go to 7 Plus right now or watch it Sunday on 7. While this crisis continues and we struggle to find our new normal, we're extending UE Temporary Relief on car insurance premiums if you're not using your car as much as you used to. UE. You insured. Get your Woolies worth with thousands of prices dropped across the store, like McCain Super Fries 900 grams, now just $3 each. That's why I pick Woolies. Life's full of and and even. No matter how messy life gets, Handy Paper Towel is handy for every situation. Handy Paper Towel. Keep it handy. Hey SA, are you planning a holiday in our own state? I hope you are. Then you can go to places like here or here or here. We're going to get your road trip ready at the Caravan and Camping Week. Go online to watch info sessions, learn about products and talk to experts live. Plus over 40 stores have huge sales in store on caravans, campers and accessories. Get your new free road trip ready guide and join our new SA Caravan and Camping Club. So get yourself road trip ready. Caravan and Camping SA.com.au what do I love? I love riding my bike. What do I love? I love my dog, my tiny baby. I love to teach. I love all my little Einsteins. I love not blending in. I love to stand out. I love taking off in airplanes. Celebrate all the things you love and more with Pandora. Meet the revolutionary sleeping duck mattress reimagined by aerospace engineers. The first mattress ever to win Choice's best overall mattress two years in a row. It comes manufacturer direct, free of marker. Sleeping duck, incredible quality with incredible value. Local news happens seven days a week. The most trusted, the most experienced. Adelaide turns to seven news. 
Fire has destroyed a home on Sydney's northern beaches overnight. A man and woman were taken to hospital after escaping the inferno. A teenage boy wasn't hurt. A heater is being blamed. Police in the US city of Portland hope they can defuse tension with Black Lives Matter protesters after federal forces withdrew. It comes after nearly a month of clashes with demonstrators at nightly protests. David Woywood has more. It's now been 64 nights of protests in Portland, Oregon, with demonstrators and police continuing to face off. Federal authorities have handed back control of the streets to local police forces, but it hasn't stopped the mass gatherings, with protesters calling for urgent reform. In New York, a march picketing Trump Towers, the families of those killed by police, including the brother of murdered Minneapolis man George Floyd, addressing the crowd. But we're not afraid and we're not going nowhere. It can't only mean Black Lives Matter when we are murdered by the police. But the president has brushed off the calls in Florida on a whirlwind campaign stopover. He doubled down on his law and order pitch, taking aim at the demonstrators for their tactics, claiming they've been throwing, among other things, canned soup at police. And when they get caught, they say, no, no, this is just soup for my family. It it wouldn't be long. They wouldn't be throwing soup at these guys. The president made those comments in a quick stopover in Florida, a state now deliberating on how to deal with a surge in COVID numbers or while a powerful hurricane gathers steam just off the coast. British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has put the brakes on easing restrictions in England after a surge in COVID cases, fearing a second wave of infections. He's extended the lockdown on many indoor gatherings. Hugh Whitfeld has more. The infection rate in England has doubled in recent weeks, rising for the first time since May. So Boris Johnson appeared here at Downing Street to put a stop for now to the planned easing of lockdown measures. So we should now squeeze that brake pedal, squeeze that brake pedal in order to keep the virus under control. The announcement came on a day Britain sweltered through its hottest day of the year so far, 38 degrees in some parts. Larger weddings and the opening of some businesses like casinos was going to be allowed from this weekend but now can't. And in some parts of the north of England, including all of Manchester, where there's been a spike in infections, there'll be a reintroduction of tougher rules, limiting contact between families and households. We have probably reached near the limits or the limits of what we can do in terms of opening up society. The idea that we can open up everything and keep the virus under control is clearly wrong. The warning is fresh outbreaks of the virus will only continue and the looming winter later this year remains a worry here. Two escapees have now been caught after breaking out of jail using a rope made out of bed that? sheets tied together. Two prisoners broke out of their jail cell window on the 12th floor of the Oklahoma County Jail. The second prisoner fell from the fourth floor, broke his leg and was recaptured. However, one of them, awaiting trial on a murder charge, made it to the ground and ran off. He was captured in an Oklahoma City neighbourhood a few hours later. Sport is next with Matt Shervington. Sherva, it keeps mm. getting worse for the Broncos. Yeah, no escape for the Broncos last night, Ange. They blew a win against the Sharks last night, but the coach says he's going nowhere. That's next. Also, a magic of Manu magic that got the Roosters out of trouble against the Titans today and the comeback of the year in the AFL as the Kangaroos welcome back Magic Door. The boys to carry on during the week when they... As major new developments unfold in Madeleine McCann's disappearance. Investigators breaking ground as they search for Madeleine McCann. Monday, the new investigation. There's a missing child still out there. Major new revelations. He was there. All leading to one key person. Now we can reveal all the details. He was responsible for Madeleine's disappearance. Madeleine McCann, the hunt for the prime suspect. Monday, 9.30 on 7. If you're a fan fan, you love the fan shop. They have fans for indoors, fans for outdoors. But wait, 
Now the fan shop is so much more. With more lighting, bathroom three-in-one units, outdoor heaters, and more exclusive fans. During our EFE sale, save up to 50% off everything. And we'll beat any competitor's price by 5%, even online. For range, advice, and the best prices, the fan shop, Hendon, Cumberland Park, or shop online. At Combank, we know that your home loan is the last thing you'd want to think about if the worst were to happen to a loved one. So if you, your spouse, or child passes away or falls terminally ill, Combank will pay your owner-occupied home loan for around 12 months. No fees, no sign-up. So you can focus on what really matters. And we can, together. Time for a little break. Head to Macca's and get four of your favourite classic burgers in our new McBurger box for just $16.95. Or warm up with our range of hot and tasty pies for just $1.50 each. Save up to 15% on your first year's premium when you get a new Allianz Comprehensive Car Insurance Policy online. Hey, good to go. Uh... Thanks. Get that Allianz uh... feeling. Search for a quote today. Water heaters, instant heat this winter. Jet fire, industrial, LPG and diesel fired heaters are fully automatic, reliable, portable, highly efficient, robust. Packed with safety features and all LP gas heaters AGA approved. For instant heat, Spitwater heats. That's what it does. Welcome back. North Melbourne's Majak Door has made a remarkable return to football more than 700 days after career-threatening injuries following a fall from a bridge. The Kangaroos took care of Adelaide with a 69-point win to end a six-game losing streak with Door stealing the show. It's an amazing story. It's a human triumph story. That's what it is. And the emotion says words than, more than any words could possibly say. Look at that. Last night, Brisbane thumped Essendon by 63 points to remain second on the ladder. Charlie Cameron, lively, with four goals. The Roosters' lacklustre form continued in the NRL against the Titans side that had no luck at the SCG this afternoon. The Gold Coast had a disallowed try, two players sin-binned and conceded a try to a dubious James Tedesco pass. Still, it took some Joey Manu magic to get the Premiers home. The Premiers held on to win 18-12 and stay solid in the top four. The nightmare season continued for the Broncos last night. They led Cronulla 26-18 with 10 minutes to go before conceding three tries. It's their ninth defeat in 10 games. I certainly won't be quitting. You know, I don't think quitting is a, an example that this young group um, you know, needs to see or wants to see. Coach Michael Maguire was furious with his West Tigers 26-20 defeat to the Warriors. It was very obvious there that they were walking us down the park. You know, we just had to own it and defend a couple of sets and give ourselves an opportunity, but they weren't prepared to do that, so, you know, we need to have a good look in the mirror. The Tigers are two points outside the top eight in 10th. The Brumbies and Reds play for top spot in the Super Rugby tonight. The Melbourne Rebels and Western Force went at it at Leichhardt Oval last night and introduced some new moves. Paulie from the ceiling. <laughs> Look at the big unit. Look at it. Oh, this is beautiful. Without a combination. It's one way to do it. 20 all at full time. The Rebels claim their second win from four games in the new Super Time. The Super Netball season is underway and the Sunshine Coast Lightning made the most of the new two-point super shot coming from 11 points down in the second quarter to beat the Queensland Firebirds. The West Coast Fever got their season off to a winning start, beating the Adelaide Thunderbirds by 14 points. Western Sydney Wanderers striker Nikolai Muller's A-League season could be over after the 32-year-old was knocked out during last night's 1-0 win over Wellington Phoenix. Into this quite... no, There's real concern back here for Nikolai Muller, who was out before he hit the turf right there. There's a yellow card being given by Kurt Ams. John Paul Di Marini's men moved into eighth on the ladder, four points behind sixth place, Adelaide United. 
Retired racehorses in New South Wales and Victoria have received a special present for the horse's birthday today. Tab has been selling socks in the colours of champions of the track, which has raised more than $100,000 for thoroughbred welfare. It provides a safety net for horses, so any thoroughbred, whether it's made the racetrack or not, we then will provide a home for that no matter where they are. We it's been more than 15 months since Winx was on the track, but the champion socks were most popular and have now sold out. And just to clarify, you're buying socks for humans, not for horses. Say, I don't know if I want a horse's socks. <laughs> That'd be okay, very long, thanks, wouldn't Sherbert. it? Very long and stinky. <laughs> thanks, Sherbo. Still to come in 7 News, we'll have all your Sunday weather details right around the country. We have the spark, and I really want to make that a flame. I might have kissed someone. <gasps> what? Can I just have a minute, please? I beg you, don't run away from me. New Farmer Once Alive, Sunday on 7. At Harvey Norman, get 60 months interest free and receive a bonus gift card up to the value of $500. Make your home beautiful with our range of Australian made furniture and bedding. Lounge and dining furniture with options to customise fabric, leather, size and shape. Trusted Australian made mattress brands and bedroom furniture created to suit your style. We're open, so come in store and support Australian made. Get 60 months interest free and receive a bonus gift card valued at up to $500. Now at Harvey Norman. I love a sunburnt country, a land of sweeping plains, of ragged mountain ranges, of droughts and flooding rains. I love her far horizons, I love her dual sea, her beauty and her terror, the wide brown land for me. Rain, hail and save at Chemist Warehouse. Our amazing August catalogue sale on now. Get Remy Femin 200 tablets value pack $32.99. Microgenix Protect Prostate Formula 60 capsules $13.99. Healthy Care Coenzyme Q10 150 milligram 100 capsules $20.39. And Uganic Certified Organic Toddler Milk 800 grams $30.99. For the biggest range at the lowest price, shop at Chemist Warehouse and stop paying too much. Big brands are on sale at Peter Shearer. Casual wear up to 50% off. Business shirts up to 50% off. Shoes up to 50% off. Suits from 2 dollars Two trouser suits, $4.49. Peter Shearer menswear. Always, Always the brand with the big brands. With McDelivery, Macca's comes to you contact free. For a limited time on weekends, get a free Big Mac with Macca's orders $25 or more via the Uber Eats app. See special offers in app to redeem. Time now for a quick check of the weather on the satellite. East of the country, onshore winds are generating showers along the Queensland and New South Wales coast. Around the capitals tomorrow, Brisbane sunny in 23, Sydney a touch of cloud 18, morning fog in Canberra and Adelaide 17 and mostly sunny in Melbourne, a cool of 14 degrees for Hobart in the west, a top of 19 in Perth, 31 and clear in Darwin. And that is 7 News for now. Our next bulletin is 7 News at 6. I'm Angela Cox. Thanks so much for your company. Have a great night.